Bowling Green will be a better football team this week. It will get progressively tougher. Those words last week from head coach Mark D'Antonio proved to be prophetic, but for the Spartans' credit, they came up with the effort when they needed it and up their record to 2-0. Welcome to the Spartan Sports Zone, presented to you by the good folks at Pontiac, the official performance machines of the Michigan State Spartans and the NCAA. I'm your host, Dave Ellis. The Falcons knocked off one Big Ten team in the first week, but they couldn't make it too as Michigan State came up with the effort in the second half that they needed and came up with a very important win to go to 2-0. and Coming up, they won't move into the top 25 with this win, but 2-0 and is a very important step. As Mark D'Antonio said, things are going to get tougher as they go along, but stepping up and coming up with a big win against the Falcons is a big thing for this program and something they haven't done in a long time. Zeke the Wonder Dog made his final appearance in a game at Spartan Stadium. He still made his share of catches, but it's time to hang up the Frisbees. Good luck in your retirement, Zeke. They are still going to throw things around here, and if Devin Thomas is going to be on the other end, things will be just fine. The junior hauled in a bomb from Brian Hoyer and took it all the way to the Falcon five-yard line in the first quarter. The 76-yard pickup, the longest of both of their careers. Two plays later, looks like Javon Ringer is a little tired of his buddy Jehu Colcrick getting all the scores. Great effort to punch it in for his first of the season. That kind of clogged up the inside a little bit. So, yeah, on that touchdown specifically, yeah, that's something I did have to bounce out. But uh, but luckily, I mean, my receivers and my line was aware of that, so they were able to help, help me bounce it out, so I was able to put it in the end zone. Bowling Green quarterback Tyler Sheehan found ways to frustrate the Spartan defense in the first half. He was able to wriggle free and find Tyrone Pronti in traffic for a 21-yard score. Otis Wiley was upset he didn't get there. And when Sheehan took a quarterback draw up the gut later in the second quarter for a six-yard score, things were going south for MSU quickly. Fortunately, Wiley came up with a game changer. Eric Gordon tipped the pass right into the safety's hands. State had great field position at the BG-18. Usually, you know, I take my eyes off of just knowing I, I secured it. And, I mean, it was just eyes to the bar, to my body, and I, I saw the goal line once I, <laughs> I caught it, but... I got five yards, and I definitely you know, helped our offense come out and score. Three plays later on first and goal, it's Hoyer past double coverage to Kellen Freeman Davis for the seven-yard score. That knotted things up at 14, and it's the way the first half would end. While the 2007 Hall of Fame class was introduced at the break, the Spartans had a little longer to think about how to slow down the Falcons' spread. But maybe the biggest factor was already determined. The bigger, stronger MSU players were wearing down the smaller BG personnel. The pass rush was beginning to take a toll on Sheehan. We were rushing our field, you know so we weren't closing the uh, collapse in the pocket, so he was just stepping up. The second half, he came in the locker room, made some adjustment, decided you know on instead of stop rushing up to like bull rush and collapse the pocket, and that would happen. Hoyer hit Thomas for another long one to set up Colcrick from the five. No denying the senior as he willed his way into the end zone for his fifth score of the season. A Bowling Green field goal made things a little uncomfortable, but when Hoyer hooked up once again with Devin Thomas, this time for a 17-yard touchdown, the writing was on the wall. Devin did a great job, but uh, in the same sense, uh, and I feel like the O-line did a good job too. Um, on the big plays, I had time to step up and make a play, so, um, you know, just... When everything starts clicking, you know, it's there, and Devin did a tremendous job of coming up with a big play. The defense was now teeing off on Sheehan, and Jonas Sandik led the way with three of the Spartans' seven sacks in the game. And once we got the hang of, of, of them doing them quick passes, and the quarterback's not really trying to stay in the court in the pocket, and he's trying to, you know, step up and roll out, you know, we, I just pretty much use the speed. Yeah, you're not going to call these coverage sacks, are you? These are D-line sacks you're getting. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. You know, I got to give credit to DB, and I got to give credit to the linebackers, my, 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 my dogs up front. But, uh, yeah, you know, it was, just, it was just a great great call, great defensive call and everything, and we just got the job done. An eight-minute-plus drive killed this game off in the fourth quarter. Michigan State moved to a 2-0 record on the season with a 28-17 win and pleased the head coach with the second-half effort. Especially the fourth quarter. We had two mysteries in the fourth quarter, but we didn't pay it. We didn't panic, came back and made a play on defense, okay? We didn't panic when they got down there at the end. We had to drive about 80 yards, okay, to take the clock, which we did. We took the clock, okay? That's a great job, a great job just staying with you. Outstanding job staying with you, okay? Team win, another team win. Sorry. And we can play better. We'll keep working. We'll keep working. Let's talk about the epitome of balance. One touchdown in every quarter for Michigan State today and a great defensive effort in the second half. Head coach Mark D'Antonio, you wanted some adversity for your guys. Certainly got some today from Bowling Green. Well, we got some. They came out and played very well early and threw the ball around, I think, uh, you know, hit us in the flat some, some soft coverage things. Uh, but, uh, 
our guys battled back. We didn't give up too many big plays, uh, stopped the run. Played much better the second half. Once we had adjusted to, I think, the tempo of the game, gave up three points, and you know, ended up with seven sacks. You don't lose too many games if you've been sacked seven times and had a couple picks. So we were playing and uh, did a nice job with that. I thought offensively, uh, uh, you know, played pretty solid except for the turnovers. Moved the ball down the field. On that last drive in the fourth quarter where we took about seven, eight minutes off the clock was an outstanding drive. Even though we didn't convert the field goal, we took a lot of time. And, and um, other than that field goal attempt at the end, which was a high snap, I thought our special teams played very well. Tyler Sheehan's a very mobile quarterback, gave you some problems early, but you guys really made some adjustments, and by the end of the game, he was contained and even just coughing the ball up. Well, you know, uh, early in the game, uh, we'd either pressure some or play base or, or, you know, cover them. And when we covered them and we had a three-man rush, he found a way out of it and scrambled. And, you know, he dropped back the pass about 62 times, I think. So, um, you know, he's a good player. He does a nice job, and he's going to continue to, to have success throughout the season. And uh, this time we got to win. As Coach says, Perla says, they all count one. Did you tell the guys anything special at halftime, or was that a standard, let's go out and give a better effort in the second half speed? No, I think our effort was there. I don't think it was a question of effort. It was, it was, you know, we're going to be able to handle the curveballs thrown at us and how we're going to adjust and, and, okay, now in a tight game, you know, how we're going to respond. And, and our guys did a great job. They all they did all the right things, and, uh, you know, it's a credit to how our players came back. And I hope it shows that, that we can play a tight game and something can, can happen and we can overcome those things. If you just keep playing, keep playing, and we'll be okay. You mentioned that drive at the end of the game where you didn't come up with any points, but the fans were really appreciative of it because it's something they haven't seen around here in a long time where you can get the ball and kill the game. Well, we took the clock. I thought we took the clock away from you. You know, you took the clock in the game. You know, there was, I think, you know, after this field goal, there were only two minutes left or something, 2 11. So, I mean, that's a big positive thing when you're able to do that. And that's what we talked about being balanced. I thought we threw the ball pretty well. With the exception of a couple turnovers, you said we threw, threw it very well, probably. But, um, you know, We'll take it, and uh, you know this is not a perfect world. We're going to make mistakes, but but uh, the good thing is our guys came out of here. It was a team win again, and uh, there were enough good things uh, to talk about. Bowling Green converted on a lot of third downs early, but by the end of the game, you guys were holding them off and keeping them down to a fourth down, where they went for it a couple of times, but most of the time forcing them to punt. That's a good sign. Well, that's a good sign because uh, you know we had to uh, we had to do that. <laughs> it's a good sign in this game, but uh, it's again we just adjusted to uh, the tempo of the game a little bit and uh, you know I thought our defensive line came alive a little bit that second half and uh, we hit some pressures a couple times. I think Kellen had a great sack, uh, ran the guy down, put a little speed on the field. He played a little bit more the second half on defense and uh, you know, all in all, you know, like I said, team win. Yeah, how about Devin Thomas too? 260 yards of total offense in this game. This was a breakout for him, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You know, he has a, he has a knack. You know, he had a couple big kickoff returns and uh, you know, a couple of deep ones, and so it means a very good player. And he's had a great fall camp. And the message out there would be if, if guys play well in the summer, they're probably going to play well throughout the fall as well. So and that's what's happened. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned already, but I thought our special teams were solid. That Aaron Bates was outstanding. Um, you know, you saw what Todd Bolesky could do kicking off into the end zone. Our kickoff cover team was outstanding. Um, you know, other than the botched field goal, you know, we were good. Kickoff return was good. Uh, Rangers were solid. And you mentioned you've never beaten Pittsburgh in your career. Get them coming in next week and get another shot on them. Well, we get a shot at Pitt coming in here. Coach Wanstead is a great coach, a good friend. And, um, you know, so it'll be fun. It'll, it'll be good to have them come in. So we need to get ready. Our Pontiac performer of the game this week, unquestionably, a guy we've mentioned already. 260 yards of total offense. That's almost two-thirds what Michigan State gained in the game. Devin Thomas, was this a breakout game for you today? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I mean, I try to do my best and did my part for the team. So. Your yards per catch were unbelievable out there. Four catches for almost 170 yards. Is this just head down the field and come find me? Man, I mean, the coach called a play, so I just got to execute. And when I get my name called out there, I just get excited and try to make the play. How do you find the way to get your hands on the ball in traffic? There were two or three times then defensive backs had their hands in there, but you were able to come down with the ball. I just try to focus up on the ball, you know. I got an advantage because I know where the ball is coming, unlike the defense. So I just keep my eyes on it and try to go get it. How about your kick returns? Another big part today. Oh, yeah. Um, there was, there was muff in them, you know what I mean? And so I just wanted to get my hands on it so I get as much yards as possible. When you're coming up with yards like this, are you demanding the ball on carries now? So you got a couple of rushes. Maybe give me the ball everywhere. Hey, I mean, any way possible, but uh, anything to help the team, though. Are you really starting to get a good feel for you and Brian out there and oh, yeah. make it the good combination? Oh, yeah. Me and Brian, uh, we see eye to eye a lot of times. So we're talking to HUD on, on the sideline, like, man, let's get it done. So we both got that mentality and get it done.